Hey guys, what's up? What are some of the most original fantasy movies? Fantasy movies have been getting a rap for either being really original or really not original. And I find that like the number one fantasy thing, the, the number one like factor in fantasy movies is if they're original, they're a lot more likely to be good. <laughs> and the one thing that makes fantasy as well as, as, well as sci-fi not that great is lack of originality. It's something we've seen already. It's something that happened before. Sci-fi meaning that like they're on a spaceship and then the spaceship, the robot that, that, that runs the spaceship takes the spaceship in another direction. It's like, yeah, yeah, that was like already done, you know? And they just do it again and they do it again. And same thing with fantasy. It's like, oh, and we need to, we, you know, we have, we have a party of people and we need to go on this quest this this journey to defeat some dragon or some evil wizard or something like that yeah that's been done already you know and what's interesting about like originality is that like you want to have original stuff and a lot of times you know if you look at something like sci-fi and you're thinking oh cool a sci-fi and then you see the word uto a dystopian in, in the description, it's like, oh, another dystopian world that we're in, you know. Uh, there's been so many dystopian worlds. Like, I mean, w w when they came out with Hunger Games, it was dystopian. People are like all for that. Like, yeah, it's a story in a dystopian world. And then there was another dystopian world and another. And it, like uh, it's so many dystopian worlds. And like every cyberpunk story is dystopian, you know. Like every cyberpunk story is dystopian. You know, the... Um, the Blade Runner's dystopian, like and even great, great movies like Blade Runner, it's like dystopian, not necessarily a, a very, very original movie, great movie, well done, I think Harrison Ford can do anything, like make any movie great, and I think just like, it, and you could tell like, when, when you look at something like um, uh, Blade Runner 2, with like Harrison Ford was only in that movie for like 20 minutes, as opposed to Blade Runner 1, where he was in that movie the whole movie. And that 20 minutes that he was in Blade Runner 2, that was a good part of that movie. And when he was in the full movie in the first one, that was a great movie. But it was dystopian. And it wasn't it wasn't original. Robots run amok. Robots start doing their own thing and hurting people. Like, iRobot did that. Isaac Asimov wrote that story way before Blade Runner became a movie. It was... Um, he wrote iRobot, I think that's what it was, because the movie was iRobot, and it was based on um, what Isaac Asimov wrote. And basically, again, robots just start doing their own thing. And that's the Terminator, and that's Saturn 3. I do believe it was called Saturn 3, which is a great movie that nobody ever talks about. And I think it's been, you know, I saw that movie years ago, and it does not get talked about at all. And... I've never seen it again. Like I saw it on HBO years ago, the entire movie, I thought it was amazing. And it's on Saturn and everything was a robot. Of course, a robot goes nuts, does it starts doing his own thing and starts to like kill all the people. Um, the 2001 A Space Odyssey, the computer on the spaceship takes the spaceship in another direction. Um, lost in space, the robot goes nuts. Like there's just like so many things that the robot just, just just goes nuts and starts doing their own thing. And, um, and that's the thing about it, is that like, even with like, even something like Blade Runner, it's still, and, I'm, and I think a lot of people looked at Blade Runner and said, what a great movie, great acting. You know, the acting was really good. Look at the people that were in it. The major stars, they were great actors, like not only Harrison Ford, but the other two, right? The girl, and the guy that played the robot, uh, the replicants and stuff like that, all of the people in there were great actors. Even um, the woman who was like, she was a replicant, but thought she was human, you know, you know the, the one that he ends up like hooking up with and then going to another planet and you know, whatever, he falls in love with the robot, the, le the replicant, that's how, that's how close to people they actually look like, right? And, um, and that's, that's not original either, like the robot doesn't know if it's human or not. And that's not original, you know, I've seen that before. I've seen like, you know, the robot has this identity crisis. Like even if you look at something like Data from Star Star Trek, like he had the same thing. It was the same thing that they put in Star, in Star Trek where like 
is data a robot and belong to the Federation so they can do whatever they want with him, decommission him, turn him off, anything? Or is he really, like, is he, is he a, a human? You know, he's a robot made of synthetic parts, but he's, is he alive? Is he human? Is, you know, does he have a soul? Whatever, whatever people say, you know, like, about people, things that exist. Like, is, is, he, is, he, is he, like, alive? You know, is, he looks alive, right? And so that was another thing. Um, robots, are they really alive or are they just machines? You know, and the more we make robots... And the more they look convincing, it's like Siri, you know, like a lot, I, I'm sure Siri in the future would be like, so, you know, like, so, so intelligent or whatever it is that, um, Siri in the future would be like it, it pretty much, I, I could see people in the future, like not really be able to distinguish between uh, a robot and, and like a per like sort of like a Siri kind of thing on your phone that talks to you and someone that's human. Like you really wouldn't be able to tell they're so close to each other. So that's another thing. It's like, like robots that doesn't know if they're human or not. But if you look at something like fantasy, there's so much like, even in good fantasy stories, there's just too much similarity with it. Um, if, if, even if you look at something like Harry Potter, which I would say it's a fantasy, but Harry Potter and uh, Cinderella, very, very close stories. You know, um, not exactly, but it's sort of like it's sort of similar. Cinderella also raised by her step sisters, whatever it is. Basically, they didn't like her. They made her clean the house all the time, do all the chores, didn't really treat her uh, as equals. Right. It's sort of the way that Harry Potter was raised also. And then Cinderella's fairy godmother shows up and takes her to the ball. And she becomes a princess or something like that. Right. It's the same thing that happened, like, oh, uh, Harry Potter's magical friend shows up and takes him to Hogwarts. You know, it's sort of like that. It's like, I like the story. Is it original? No, not really, because it's really been done before, like, little kid. Even something like Oliver Twist or Livid Orphan and Annie was the same thing. Oliver Twist thought he was this, you know, poor little kid who became a thief and whatever and started hanging out with thieves. And then all at the end of the story, they, he realizes that he's a son of a millionaire the whole time, right? All of a sudden, like same thing with Little Orphan Annie, like, oh, she's the daughter of this billionaire or whatever it was, you know? And it's like, those two stories are just so similar. Um, another thing about, about fantasy is the, the hero, the fantasy hero. And this is like, you know, if you look at something like Conan the Barbarian, great movie, Schwarzenegger like really shot it out of the park with that movie. It was a good movie. The acting was good. The guy really tried learning how to act. You could see like he's, I don't know, you, you could see he's more of a bodybuilder than he is anything else. He, he's got the bodybuilder voice, like he talks like a bodybuilder. So he would make sense for, the, for him to play Conan. He just plays like roles that are created that he's perfect for that nobody else can do. Like the Terminator, he's kind of perfect for it because of the accent and the way he talks and everything like that, you know. And he did take some acting lessons, so he's kind of able to pull this kind of thing off where he does look convincing as an actor. Uh, but he's not the first strong guy hero. Before him, there was um, Flash Gordon, there was Tarzan, you know, also strong guys. Tarzan was really strong. You know, he didn't look like, he, he wasn't built muscular, but he was pretty freaking strong. Like, he can swing on vines, he can fight lions and gorillas and things like that. He was pretty strong, you know. He wasn't supernatural. And so it's called Conan wasn't supernatural either. He was just a bar strong barbarian who you got to fight with a sword. You know, Tarzan, not supernatural. He was just raised by apes and just learned to be like super, you know, savage. And he learned to be an ape, basically, you know, how, how, to, how to be an ape, how to fight like an ape, how to swing on vines, how to climb trees, all that kind of stuff. And then, I mean, he did have that call that he did where he would call the animals and stuff like that. So that was a little bit supernatural, <laughs> you know, but it wasn't like the whole story. And you could see like, they, they always put supernatural things in that. I mean, obviously like at the same time, you could see Conan the Barbarian probably fought, like his fighting level uh, with a sword was like higher than anybody else's. I mean, he was hero level, you know, so it was also a very, very supernatural in that where his strength was a little bit more exaggerated, you know, but he's not the first strong guy in history. There was Samson from the Bible. It was like, there was Gilgamesh from the old Sumerian stories, the Gilgamesh stories and whatever it was. 
Um, there was Hercules from the Greek myths, where he was half god, half man, and whatever. Um, there were a lot of, like, you know, like, strong people in the past. Um, and even David and Goliath, like, David was, like, the cunning guy. Was, wasn't the strong guy, but cunning enough to be able to take down giants. And that was, like, it was sort of, like, also an underdog, you know? Like, like oh, he, he, he went against someone that's more powerful than him. And Conan did that. In the movie, Conan, when, you know, in, in the Schwarzenegger, the first one, the first movie, Conan the Barbarian, he went against Thulsa Doom, who was way more powerful than he was. I mean, Thulsa Doom almost killed him. Like, they had him killed. He had him crucified on, on a tree, you know, basically. And then he was saved, and then he came over. He, he was basically like, like, Thulsa Doom didn't know, didn't know he survived, and he did. And he just snuck up on Thulsa Doom and just, like, at the end of the movie, just, like, took his head off, you know. And he only did that because he snuck up on him. Like, that was the only thing. You know, with also Doom, he could turn into a snake. He had magic powers. He was, like, a cult leader. He had, he had soldiers around him that could kick Conan's ass any time, you know? And so, like, he was way more powerful than Conan. And Conan was the underdog. And he was like, no, I'm going to take this guy down. And so the way he beat him was sneak up behind him. And he was already on top of him. You know, he had his sword drawn... And Thulsa Doom could do nothing. I and mean, Thulsa Doom tried to, like, enchant him with a spell. Tried to, like, tell him that he was his father and he Conan was his son. And without him, Conan would be nobody and whatever it is. And Conan just resisted the spell and <laughs> took his head off, like, with a sword. You know? And so, um... And, and so that was, that was that, you know? Like, and it wasn't because Conan was strong that he did that. I mean, part of it was, yeah, because he was strong, he was able to survive to that point, but because he was stealthy and he, he snuck up on him. He just walked up behind him and he did not, and Thulsa Doom did not expect him and stuff like that to do, to do that. Um, and so was that like, you know, that, that's sort of like, uh, it's kind of like original, but it's kind of like not original. And um, it's really, really hard to find an original like story. If you look at something like a Star Wars, I'm gonna say a lot of what was in Star Wars was pretty original. Like, I would say it was pretty original, even though it wasn't. It was based on, if you look at some of the older stories, like before Stars, uh, uh, Star, Star Wars, um, there was like uh, Buck Rogers, Battlestar Galactica, yeah, um, uh, a, a, lot of, a lot of stuff, uh, Buck, Ro uh, yeah, Buck Rogers. Um, there was a bunch of, there was a lot of stuff before Star Wars that was like sci-fi kind of thing. And I think Star Wars just like built from that and became like a really, really good story. And I do think it was it was more original than a lot of stuff. Because if you look at Star Wars, it's just like, there's not a lot of things that are just not original. The lightsaber was original. No one else has created a lightsaber before. Even in like um, uh, John Carter of Mars, that, that, that was happening all before Star Wars. Um, but John Carter of Mars it was not anything like Star Wars. Star Wars was, was original. I think it, it got a lot of good credit. Not only was it a good movie and a good trilogy, the original three stories, the original three movies, but they were pretty original. Like, the, the, the aliens was, were original. The Force was kind of original. You know, it's, it's sort of like putting a fantasy, like, sort of element into a sci-fi movie, I think at the time was original because you didn't have that. You had Lord of the Rings... And then you had like the space operas, right? And in Lord of the Rings, there were like, they were uh, wizards, right? And in the space opera, there were spaceships and it was in the future and it was technology. And what they did with Star Wars was they, they bonded it together. They put, they made it a science fantasy. You know, they made it like technology and then they made it like magic. Because like the force is nothing but magic. And you've got like characters like Han Solo that didn't believe in the force. Like throughout the whole first movie, he did not believe in the force. It was like, that's just a bunch of jargon while like Obi-Wan Kenobi knew the force was real and, and was, was a Jedi of the force. You know, he, he used the force to his advantage. So did Darth Vader. And if you look at something like uh, the two of them, even that was just Dark Knight against white knight like it was it was basically good knight against evil knight it's good versus evil you know and that was not original but you know what good versus evil i don't think anyone ever like it doesn't really get old so what you could do is like things that really don't get old fast you could reuse them in stories like dragons they don't get old quests they don't get old either like as long as you change things enough about it it doesn't get old and what's interesting about like star wars was 
in the first movie, Darth Vader killed Obi-Wan, and it was like, you know, the evil prevails. You know, it was sort of like evil prevails. And it was the same thing in, Star in, in, in Conan the Barbarian, where, like, Thulsa Doom destroys Conan's village, kills his family, kills his parents, puts him, you know, enslaves him, and makes him, like, made him basically a fighting slave. Like, he was someone that people would bet on to, to go to, to fight other people, and that's what, you know, he was basically a, 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 a slave in the pit to fight other people, and people would bet, on, you know, for him or against him. And that was his life. You know, and so it was that, and then eventually, you know, like with with um, Luke Skywalker destroying the Death Star, it was the same thing. Where like at the end of the movie, you know, the the light prevails, like you know, the good beats evil, you know, or like uh, the you know um, the it was the same thing as um, in 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 Conan basically because he was kind of like. Conan's not, like, that good, but he was good compared to, you know, like, Tulsa Doom, who was just evil through and through. You know, he wasn't evil. That's the thing about Conan. He's, he's, he's good. He's chaotic, good, but he's good. He's not necessarily evil. He'll steal shit. You know, he, he'll steal. He's a thief, which is, doesn't make them good, but he'll steal things. But, you know, like, basically, you know, stealing from the rich and giving to the poor was also considered good with other characters that did that, right? Um, and so the thing, and him like actually winning in the end of the movie. So the, so evil like beats good in the beginning of the movie and then good beats evil at the end of the movie and puts an end to it, you know? So what's interesting about like Star Wars is that like evil never gets beat. You can never defeat the empire. You can never like conquer the empire. The whole point of the story is the two, it was the fight between the rebellion and the empire. Without the fight between the, the the rebellion and the empire, there is no story. That is the story. And once one beats the other, the story's over, right? That's why like one has to win, and then it's and then it's like uh, revenge of the, uh, of, you know, like like um, what was it like the second one? The second movie was like yeah, revenge of the dark side or revenge of the empire. Or empire strikes back, you know. It's like so one has to win, and then the other has to win, and then. It's, um, in the third movie, it was like, the good guys win again, you know? And it's, it's always that back and forth with like, one person wins, the other person wins, the other person wins, the other person wins, you know? That's another thing that's like, not original, like whatsoever, because it's just a continuation. It's like, there's no ending. There'll never be an ending. It'll never get resolved. It's just the eternal war between good and evil, which you can argue, like, does it actually exist? Are there people saying, I'm good, therefore I'm going to take down anyone who I think is evil? And are evil people saying, I'm evil, so if that person's good, I'm taking them down, you know? Uh, you don't know too many people like that, you know? <laughs> I'm sure there's some people that are like that, and obviously, like, hey, that's just someone's choice to be like that, right? But it's not really prevalent. People are not after that. People really don't look at things that way, really. You know, people are just more like... Uh, I'm just gonna live my best life, you know, that's pretty much what most people, the way people look at these things, um, you know, whatever, like, just life itself, um, but, so you, even though, like, the lightsaber, I, I would say that's pretty, you know, unique, it, it, it's, it's pretty, like, yeah, there's a lot of things that they, that they invented, uh, spaceships that go faster than light, not, not, not original, you know, blasters, it's not original either, but lightsabers, lightsabers are pretty original. I don't think there's been another lightsaber in any other stories before Star Wars, you know. But the thing about it is that, like, in, in fantasy stories, basically, um, when they're original, it's really cool. If you look at some things that, the, some of the more popular fantasy stories, you'll see where there's originality in the story. Like, that's part of the reason why Star Wars is so, is so liked. Not only is it a good story and a good movie and a bunch of good movies, but... It's, it's kind of original. It's not that taken from other stories. And if you look at something like uh, Lord of the Rings, one of the reasons why people like Lord of the Rings, I think it's original because like the main character, the hero of Lord of the Rings is not a strong character. He's a halfling. You know, he's a hobbit. He's like this little short guy. And uh, he's not, he doesn't look like Conan. He doesn't look like big at all. And he can't fight. And he's not that strong, you know? And 
even his we even his weapons and his magic isn't that powerful. It's just like a ring that makes him invisible, and uh, a sword that lights up when there's danger around or when there's like wraiths after him or something like that, you know? Um, and so there's that, that's kind of original, but then you've got like the wizard, the white wizard against the, the dark wizard and the gray wizard or the black and the white wizard and whatever, evil wizard, good wizard. Um, you've got like that going on. You've got dragons, which are not original. Um, elves are not original. Dwarves are already been, the, the, these, these characters have already been thought up and they're in other stories, uh, walking trees, you know, um, an evil force, orcs. All the other stuff is just like, is the author, you know, taking from other stories and putting it into his own story. Like, he did not create his own characters. He didn't create anything. Even The Hobbit itself was not invented by the guy that wrote Lord of the Rings. It's from other stories, you know. And so, um, and so even something that's original like Lord of the Rings, it's original to some degree and, and, in, and in some other ways it's already been done, you know? And even the greatest stories like that are already done. Like e even Harry Potter, it's still already been done. Even Star Wars, you could see where certain things have already been done in other stories. And the thing about it is that like, people don't mind it because some things just don't get old fast and some things do. And when things get old, it just feels like, if it feels like the whole story, like that the, the story is a complete copy of some other story, then people don't like it. They're like, no, it's too close to this other story. But when it's like got elements of other stories that you've heard before, but also has maybe like, you know, original characters and original plot and original whatever, you know, original this and original that, and some original ideas in it, I think people will pass that, give it a pass and say, yeah, that's original enough to be its own story. And I think it's a lot different. Like Dune is probably one of the most original sci-fi stories I think ever written because it's everything about it is is, is invented. Everything about it is unique. Ten thousand years in the future, the the creatures that live in there original. But the thing about it is that even though the stories and the planets and everything about the stories are original, the thing about Dune is what's not original is the 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 political structure. Um, of the planets and, and the societal structure and the financial and economical structure or everything. That's not original, but what it says by not being original is the same financial, all of our structures, all of our human structures that we put into place are still going to be, some form of them is still going to be here in 10,000 years. Even though in 10,000 years, everything will be different, the world will be different, the structures that we have in place, there's an emperor, that there's a king, that there's a, a ruler, there are armies, you know, there are like warships and things like that. Those things will still be there in 10,000 years. And that's kind of what the story is saying, that like what we create is going to stay here, but technology and everything else, that, that's all going to change. And it's interesting how there's just some things are just very, very original, like Dune. And I'm not going to say Dune is like any other story at all. And that's what I like about Dune. Um, there are stories that are original and there's stories that are less than original. And whether that makes them good or bad, you know, who knows, but, um, but that's the thing about it, you know, yeah, some stories are just more original than others, and it's always better when you have an original fantasy, because I think people like those a lot more. So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like it and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in another video later. Take care.